Land Rover is on a downsizing kick. First, the Range Rover received a full diet last year, and this year, it's the sport's turn. Weighing roughly 4,700 pounds, this Range Rover is 800 pounds lighter than the model it replaces. Built on an all-new aluminum platform, the Sport has dropped its base V8 in favor of a supercharged V6. Now, Land Rover is relying on an overused cliche that this was designed and built without compromise. But the question is, can a V6-powered aluminum unibody SUV really be a Range Rover? We're going to find out. Aside from the 340 horsepower supercharged V6 producing 332 pound-feet of torque, the Range Rover Sport can also still be had with a 5-liter supercharged V8 thundering out 510 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. Both engines make do with an 8-speed automatic transmission and choice of transfer cases, either a single speed or a traditional 2-speed with low-range gearing. All sports receive start-stop technology and the most efficient version of the V6 Sport should return 17 miles per gallon city and 23 miles per gallon highway, while the V8 will be a little bit more thirsty, netting only 14 miles per gallon city and 19 miles per gallon highway. Pricing for the base SC will begin at $63,495, while the top of the line Range Rover Sport Autobiography nets a $30,000 premium, bringing the total to $93,295, including delivery. The look of the new aluminum body is a mix of the Evoque and the full-size Range Rover. And although it's only 2.5 inches longer than the outgoing model, thanks to a 7-inch longer wheelbase, the overall vehicle seems much bigger. The side windows are also a lot taller than the old model, which not only improves sight lines, but gives the vehicle a lower-to-the-ground appearance. And, of course, being a Range Rover, there are still side fender vents with a strake through them. Want to personalize your Range Rover Sport? Well, there are 11 interior color themes with additional seat colors, four aluminum interior finishes, three real wood veneers, three headliner colors, 19 exterior paint finishes, three roof colors, and nine wheel options available in four different sizes. The interior of the Sport has been thoroughly modernized and the center console now sits higher, allowing the controls to be closer to the driver. A new 12.3-inch virtual gauge cluster is also available on higher trim models of the Range Rover Sport. There's now one more inch of space behind the front seats, but the big news for 2014 is the addition of third row seats that Land Rover calls 5 plus 2 seating. Now these seats are really just jump seats for kids 12 and under, but thankfully a full grown adult will easily fit in the second row. Land Rover has spent a lot of time making the interior of the new Sport quiet, which will be good news for your audiophiles, as there's an optional Meridian sound system that pumps out 1700 watts of awesomeness through 23 speakers and a subwoofer. The Range Rover Sport plays in that bizarre niche market alongside the Porsche Cayenne and the BMW X5 of super sporty SUVs. Land Rover claims that this vehicle can hit 0-60 to 60 in 5 seconds flat with the supercharged V8. Speaking of which, when you get on the gas with that supercharged V8, the roar it makes is unbelievable thanks to a sound composer, which seems to be popping up in basically every car made these days. Alongside the huge weight savings, Land Rover has spent a lot of time developing the chassis of this vehicle as they wanted it to be the best handling Range Rover of all time. And I think they've succeeded. I know the old Range Rover Sport wasn't much of a slouch, but the new model handles so much better. And if you get a V8 supercharged version, the suspension is even stiffer and tighter, and there's a dynamic mode that makes things even crazier. The secret to this superb handling has to do with the air suspension, which in dynamic mode will automatically keep the vehicle level during hard cornering. On top of that, there's brake torque vectoring at all four wheels, as well as a lockable rear differential. The supercharged V6 is more than enough power for this vehicle and at no time did it feel lacking. 
I mean, it doesn't have the ungodly thrust of the V8, but it still gets this vehicle up and moving. And a lot of that has to do with the lighter weight of the new Range Rover. Dynamically, there is a noticeable softness to the V6 compared to the V8, but then again, the V8 just might be so good that the V6 is good in its own right, but can't compare to the handling of that amazing dynamic mode. But on-road prowess is only one half of the Range Rover Sport. It's equally at home off-road. Unlike some SUVs that pretend to be able to do off-roading, this vehicle is set up for some serious off-roading. The best way it was described to me is that this vehicle is a mountain goat in a tuxedo, and it's really true. It has a locking center differential, 11 inches of ground clearance, can wade through more water than you're probably ever going to encounter, and has more terrain modes than I know what to do with. We had a professional take us on a serious, hardcore off-road course, and the things this vehicle did blew my mind. Land Rover has succeeded in making the sport better thanks to more versatility, better on-road dynamics, more safety features, and slightly better fuel economy, although I doubt many buyers will care much about the latter. Range Rovers have always been bought on style, pedigree, and on- and off-road ability, and with the new Sport, thanks to a lighter weight and despite a smaller engine, it still does all of these things beautifully. For more on this review and others like it, visit autoguide.com. The interior... <clears throat> Whoa, 12 years old again.